Hello everyone, this is Food is a Conversation Alumni Edition, session 48, two more to go to reach our 50 50th session. I'm so excited about this. Uh, so what are these conversations about? Uh, we are featuring our ecosystem members who attended any of the education past, let it be a summer course or uh, the Food Innovation Master Program or now the Food and Climate Shaper Digital Boot Camps. Um, we Hi. organized with FAO. Hi, Farah. I'm so happy that uh, it worked out. Uh, let me just finish the intro and then we go on with the, with the questions. So we host these sessions twice a week, once on Tuesday and once on Thursday. We try to allocate the time slots differently because, as you can imagine, our alumni are from all over the world, so we want to accommodate all time zones. Um, so if you don't have the time to follow us till the very end, no worries, because we will post the session on IGTV and you will be able to rewatch it or watch it along the other 47 sessions what we have um, recorded so far this year. Uh, and I'm also very excited because we have many Many, many more people to feature next year, especially because we are um, finishing the second edition of our digital bootcamp on the 20th of December. So watch out for the upcoming 40 people who I can uh, I can feature along the way. Um, it will be a very casual 30 minute conversation. So you will learn a bit more about Farah and her local food system and what she learned um, during her educational program and how is she applying that in her life right now or professional private uh, and um, so yeah it's a very casual conversation please post your questions if you have any and um, let's start so Farah please introduce yourself tell us where you are dialing in from and how did you end up being my classmate in 2018 in Italy okay uh, hello Julia hello everyone who's joining um, so my name is Farah obviously and I am uh, from Jordan um, Jordan is in the Middle East, uh, if uh, anyone doesn't know. Um, so uh, basically, um, I'm, um, I'm passionate about uh, food, food innovation, sustainable development, uh, slow food. And in uh, my career that I would... ...aspects together. Um, you asked me how I ended up in the food innovation program. Uh, so basically, I was at a point in my life that I was um, um, looking for finishing my studies, continuing my master's degree. And I was um, looking for something that um, has to do with food and innovation at the same time. Um, so basically, I just kept looking online for things that could be related to both, um, uh, to both um, uh, subjects. And um, I found about the food innovation program. And um, as soon as I like uh, opened their website, read a little bit about the previous edition, I um, just really thought that this could be uh, a good program and a good fit for me. Um, so basically, the reason that I um, wanted to do something that is related to food first is um, that I got my uh, diploma in culinary arts a few years back. And um, as soon as I graduated from uh, my uh, culinary school, I um, started working in sustainable development. Um, the reason that I wanted to do something that is related to innovation is that in the sustainable development field, I was working within uh, local uh, rural marginalized communities. And um, working on a daily basis with these communities um, and programs that are trying to improve their livelihoods and um, create the value production um, uh, chains, um, you see that there are numerous uh, challenges that these communities face. And um, it actually opened my eyes on um, the different and like numerous challenges that our food system faces. Um, so um, when you're in an environment that is uh, surrounded with uh, difficulties and pro uh, problems, and you see how ineffective are traditional solutions to solve these problems, uh, you have to like think outside of the box. Um, so I'll give you an example of one, like the most common, one of the most common examples that these communities used to, uh, or still uh, face. Um, so let's say that these marginalized communities are uh, far from major cities where the uh, central markets are. And um, although that these uh, communities produce and um, farm, their production does not reach the major uh, central markets. And even if they do, like the prices are already so low because of like uh, flows of production from other nearer cities. 
So it's either with um, like big uh, or large problems like this, or like the smaller problems that encounter the farmers and producers on a daily basis. Um, I realized that uh, we um, do need new uh, solutions, new ways of thinking in order to effectively solve these problems. And um, that's why I was looking for the words actually, like I ended up looking for words like innovation and food together and trying to find a program that fits both. And um, I found the food innovation program. I applied, they accepted me. And honestly, it was like a life changing experience. And that's it. <laughs> Yes, that's it. Ah, okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, that um, actually, um, your explanation brings me to my next question uh, because I learned um, along the way when we got to know each other that um, you already be at Slow Food in Jordan before you came to the master program. Um, do you want to tell us a bit about the activities what you carried out um, in the past? Okay. Um, so basically, I've been working with Slow Food since 2014. And um, it's a funny story how I came, came about to work with Slow Food. Um, so I was just finished with uh, my uh, culinary diploma and I went to do my internship in Dubai. And it was the first time that I leave home for a long time. And of course, I like the thing that I missed the most was our food. Um, I think that I missed like um, the ability to go to the markets and find fresh um, quality produce. Uh, so I missed the um, tasty veggies and fruits that we have in our markets. And um, especially, especially that I come from a family that cherish quality food. And by quality, I mean that it's local, it's seasonal, and it's fresh. And um, in the city that I was doing my internship, this was uh, like something that you cannot find. And I would go uh, grocery shopping and then you would see an apple and then a pear and then you take them and they smell basically the same and taste the same, which is like tasteless. And um, I, I would like, I felt really sad and I felt that I needed to do something back home that is related to trying to protect or like maintain the um, fact that I do have access to uh, quality produce back home. Although that it is, it was actually also in decline uh, and still is. Um, so like try to like keep holding the final <laughs> final straw. Um, so when I got back home, I had a discussion with several people. One of the most um, people that influenced my uh, my path um, was uh, my teacher Bruno Cardone. So Bruno is uh, from Torino, and as you know, is Torino is the headquarters of Slow Food, and as any other um, um, in person from Torino is very proud of, of slow food and very aware of its work and impact. And uh, we started discussing like, um, um, he's like started discussing slow food and what it does and he st started explaining to me and we, we decided to look up the closest um, uh, chapter to me geographically to contact. And then um, uh, it turned out that there isn't any in Jordan. And uh, so I got really in, like enthusiastic with the ideas and like the philosophy of slow food. And I told him, why wouldn't we just start um, um, a chapter here? And we did. So like I uh, contacted the headquarters and then we started the convivium in Jordan. Um, since then, we've been working on uh, developing a local network of individu individuals, whether they're chefs, farmers, producers, activists, uh, scientists, um, so you name it, that share the same ideas and the philosophy of slow food. And we've been uh, working on raising awareness uh, with the um, uh, work of slow food, its impact, and like what uh, what uh, the association does to uh, make our food system more sustainable. Um, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> now, like recently, uh, we have a, a project that we're working on. Uh, so mm -hmm. this is like the project that I'm most excited about. Um, this project is is called uh, Mid Snail, and mm -hmm. we have this uh, this um, project in Jordan, Midsnail, meaning that um, it's sustainable networks for agro food innovation leading in the Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. um, it's a um, European uh, Union funded project and it's a consortium between uh, seven countries, um, Jordan, uh, Palestine, Lebanon, Tunisia, Malta, uh, Italy and Spain. Um, so this project is trying to uh, raise awareness and implement uh, the ideas of slow food within the um, Mediterranean, with the Euro-Mediterranean countries. And um, the general objective of this uh, project is to foster 
socially and environmentally uh, sustainable development of agro food um, um, uh, small businesses um, through valorizing traditional food um, like traditional euro and Mediterranean um, food products according to the slow approach and to the short chain uh, uh, principles. Um, mm -hmm. So um, it would be through um, providing training services to local actors, um, trying to find the, uh, like define new pathways for sustainable de development that is beyond major economic trends, um, to, um, building uh, pilot projects uh, to try to valorize and enhance local productions. Um, and uh, like basically the mo most important thing is to try to uh, adopt a new sustainable business uh, models. Um, I'm excited about this project because I think that the expected results, if they if they got um, uh, done, it will be very beneficial for countries like uh, like ours. And um, so I give you a few examples of of what would be the outcomes. Please. Uh, yeah. So it would be like creating a network within the Euro Mediterranean uh, countries, and this network will have uh, several farmers markets created. Uh, a Euro Mediterranean Chef Alliance where they can in, uh, exchange um, uh, ideas and uh, do events and etc. Um, so also like the the main thing is creating slow hubs, and these slow hubs um, that will be launched in each uh, of the part partners regions would act as a cluster of stakeholders to consolidate the food community. Um, and I hope that these actions will contribute to um, create new policies at uh, either um, uh, regional or cross-border level uh, to reach the critical mass that uh, is necessary to um, start up the capitalization of uh, significant economic growth. Um, now, um, I'm really excited about this project and it's like the still needs um, it's three years project and we're in on, on the second year and um, we'll let you know later on like we'll keep you posted with all of the um, updates and like the milestones please so um then because it's a multi-stakeholder uh, project if i understand it correctly yeah. uh and you are responsible for uh, carrying out these activities in jordan specifically um exactly. can you tell me how is this project perceived so when you are addressing these uh, stakeholders are they open to to collaborate and and learn and and be part of this project um so far yes because uh, uh, until like because the product is is um um uh, how do you say divided to into phases and now we're in the first phase which is uh, working with the, uh, the local communities and um, we're doing like we're mapping the territory uh, of the area of intervention and we're working with um, uh, mapping also the product and the producers and um the local community so far is very um uh, accepting of the ideas and they're very exciting it's just like um, uh, beyond uh, beyond like um, beyond the way that I've, I've imagined it uh, they're very open they're very helpful and they're very um, curious about about what what would this uh, project lead to um, I think that the difference between this project and like other um, international organization funded projects is that um, what Slow Food does is that it works with the people and from the people. So it's a grassroots, uh, grassroots uh, organization. And it's just about building communities within, within the country that, um, the, or like each, each region, that the community is responsible for their own um, community. It's not about just having a like, certain amount of funds and then you spend the fund and then there is no impact. Um, so it's just like like um, um, planting the seed and then the seed will, will grow and then other, it will affect, like uh, influence other communities to do to do the same. So I, I hope that um, this would be like a great start within this like the certain area that we're working on that it will spread to the other areas also. Yes, it's, it then, sounds like you need to have a regenerative approach even with these projects to make sure that it's uh, it's then ongoing afterwards. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. Like this is why they're doing the slow hubs because the slow hubs would be uh, would be an entity or like a, um, um, a consortium that will continue working even after the uh, the project to to um, like consolidate the food communities and give them support. Yeah.
And do you have any um, any tools to already measure the impact along the way of this project? Um, I will. Uh, I'll have to check and let you know what the, because I'm responsible for the field. But I'm sure there are tools that that, that they're using. But I I don't know which exactly. But I can like check and let you know. Um, Okay, great. Because I think this is very important as well. We have a lot of uh, willingness nowadays and also um, actions taken, but I think it's important for us to also measure how is our impact because on that way you can adjust your approach and you can also um, see if the efforts what you are putting in something are actually um, achieving the goals what you said at the beginning. Um, so you also are involved in other projects uh, and you are um, trying to act in the in the food innovation space in Jordan uh, and I'm uh, aware of another project you are currently working on. Um, do you want to tell us about a bit, um, especially because it's a very uh, new trend uh, even in, in other countries? Okay, so I'll, I'll start by explaining like um, the whole innovation, trying to explain uh, how the innovation scene is in Jordan. Um, so as, as soon as I arrived back um, home from Italy, um, I was like very excited and enthusiastic um, after our global mission to Syria and like to try to measure what, what, what um, uh, are the um, like things that are happening in Jordan because pre feb I didn't have this interest and I didn't know if, if any exists, uh, basically. Um, so uh, I went back home, started scanning the innovation scene. And, um, you know, despite many challenges that we have as, as an emerging country, um, Jordan is striving to become a hub for entrepreneurs and innovative technologies. Um, our ICT uh, sector in Jordan has been growing for the last decade, and um, especially the capital city, uh, has been witnessing like a new vibrant startup scene uh, since the early 2000. Um, but mostly it was in, and still is in the services field. Um, as long as for the agricultural field, um, the innovation sector is um, mainly focused on infrastructure and organizational solutions, uh, such as like a clean tech, um, 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 alternative energies, water solutions, and etc. Um, so there is a gap between uh, the innovation scene and the food industry, and there are a few companies that are working on, on, on um, like, um, let's say, food innovation, but it's focused on the, only on the production level. And uh, there is a lack of tapping on, on the other parts of the supply chain. Um, so basically, this is like, could be like a challenge, but at the same time, it just creates ample opportunities to try to bridge between the uh, two sectors. Um, now, on the other hand, I've also been noticing like new consumer trends and trying to um, uh, see what, what, what like, consumers are uh, nowadays interested in, uh, in Jordan. And uh, it's really diff like, different from each local context to the other. But I noticed like something that is happening that is also um, in align, uh, like, aligned with uh, the global uh, trend. And um, I think that um, the need for a new plant-based products are on the rise, uh, which is like to me a little bit strange because in our cuisine is actually a haven for vegans, uh, like vegetarians and vegans. So I guess that um, maybe we cannot uh, separate the uh, current consumer from the global taste because these products they are they already used to. It's like full, and the, like the supermarkets are full with these uh, products, um, and. Um, Basically, um, global taste is what drives the purchasing um, uh, decisions of uh, our current consumers. Um, so, for example, like you asked me about the new new things that are happening, um, it was like a shock for me that I've been at, uh, approached by clients that are interested in developing plant-based products that are like um, uh, uh, vegan protein bars and um, uh, just recently plant-based cultured butter. Um, and um, I think that um, it's because of the hype and uh, like seeing the international markets and what, what is being sold and what's new. Uh, but also like on the same time, I've been trying to, and like I'm just deciding now to start working on um, developing new plant-based products that are local, but also can meet the global taste. And um, this is something that I'm doing alone, like by my own, but I'm trying to 
just like experiment and see see where this leads me that's very interesting and um so we see it in other countries as well how let's call it sometimes western uh westernized diets are uh, entering uh, markets of um uh, other other regions but do you think that the consumers are also seeking for these products so is there a demand or is that only this global hype what we see and we try to implement it in a new new I region think, you can do it in specifically there is a demand but the demand comes from a very niche market and mm -hmm. um like even even though when you go to the supermarkets you can see that these products are are um, on display but it's still very minimal um and um, like i i you remember when i sent you the picture of the um, impossible burger that they sell it in one of the like biggest retail exactly. recently um but um they said it like very like it's a very small fridge and like small, small uh, very small freezer and they said it's very um minimally but like i'm trying to to reach someone to see like about what it's like impossible sometimes to get these numbers to see like what are the sales like um are the consumers are um, like um, uh, very keen to buy these products or not so like i'm trying to see if there's anyone who can help me with the numbers but i think it's just like um, somehow a secret <laughs> like the retail retailer doesn't want to share these numbers um but i think it's growing it's a trend it's growing um people are um, um, uh, asking for these products if there is a demand i i don't think that the the products would arrive to this country yeah definitely so um looking at the future future of food um i have a question what i ask from everyone on these sessions and that's how would you imagine your food future and that would be your preferred food future please even like without any barriers so what would be your ideal scenario uh within a foreseeable future for our food system i think that my my preferred future uh, would be a future when like each and every person on this planet uh, would have access to good clean and fair food um although it's like a difficult uh, journey but i think that with combined efforts um, the future um, uh, would be actually become like this which would become the norm rather than now it's being the impossible um so yeah good <laughs> access to good clean and fair food to everyone very nice very nice thank you so much farah for thank sharing you. um your your experiences with us um for those who join us later don't worry because the session will be posted on our IGTV so you will be able to uh, to watch it later at your free time and also the other sessions what we have recorded so far and stay tuned the next session is next Tuesday um 6:30 p.m. central european time and um well, that's it farah thank you so much i'm happy i could host you okay sorry thank you for I'd like to you and everyone who joined and um that's it thank you and like i'm really excited and glad that we had this conversation thank you okay siri bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Yeah.